Hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you two fun things that you can create from Panorama Photos. The first being a sphere or a little planet image and the second a scrolling video that is a nice way to share panoramas on social media like Instagram. Okay, so we'll move across to Photoshop to look at our first um, little project or panorama project. We're going to go open and we're going to open up this uh, nice panorama of these colorful buildings. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to unlock this layer. When you bring in an image, it initially has a little lock on it down in the bottom and you can click on that to unlock or you can also click and drag to duplicate the layer. We want to do both in this care case. Um, we need two copies of it. Um, so I've just dragged it down to the little uh, folder icon here to duplicate. You can also go to the layer menu and press um, duplicate layer up there. So a couple of options on how to do that. Okay, so we can't really see it yet, but there's now two copies of this, this image on top of each other. We need to make space for the, the new copy, which we're going to create as a sort of mirror image off to the right, which will m mean that we get a much more s seamless um, sort of sphere or loop as we create this little planet image. To guide us doing that, we wanna use our rulers in Photoshop, which may or may not be visible for you already. To turn them on, we'll go to the view option uh, or menu rather and turn on rulers or command R on the keyboard, control R for a PC. Once the rulers are up, we want to change them so that they show us percentage. You can do that by right clicking and change to percentage. The reason being we want to just increase this crop by uh, double, so up to 200%. That's much easier to do with a percentage rather than going with centimeters or millimeters. So change it to percentage and then we're going to use the crop tool here. And once we press crop, we'll get these little anchors or handles on the edge of our image and we can drag those and it will show us the percentage by which we're increasing. And we want to take that up to 200%. There we go. So then we've got this blank space. We just need to accept that crop by pressing the little tick up here. We've got this blank space that we can move the um, the other image, the new layer onto. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So that's command plus or control plus, uh, sorry, command minus or control minus on a PC. We're then going to switch back to our normal move tool, which is V on the keyboard and make sure that we have the new layer uh, on top selected. And then we can simply drag that across and move that into the blank space that we've created. Um, it's not quite ready to go. We want it to be like a mirror image, whereas at the moment it's just a, a complete duplicate. So we need to flip this. To do that again, make sure that that layer is uh, selected and we go to the edit menu, transform, flip horizontal, like so. And now it is a mirror image and it sort of continues on seamlessly in the middle. We do have a little gap on the side here of the image. So what we're going to do there is go back to our crop tool um, and we're just going to bring in that crop very slightly from the edge. Now if you're having trouble getting it to do it in a small amount, you can hold the control key on your keyboard and it'll let you do it in smaller increments. So I just want to do it to there. And again, we press the little tick in the top to accept that crop. Um, and now we've got this nice sort of seamless mirror image um, of the two photos joined together. Okay, next step. We need to change this into a square. Now this is going to look really weird when you do this and you probably think that you've messed it all up, but it sort of comes good at the end. Um, we squish this down into a square shape before we turn it into the sphere or planet. So we go to the image menu and we're going to go to image size. And we, we, we want to make the width the same as the height. Um, you may need to turn this little lock off when you do this. This little lock would prevent you from changing the existing uh, dimensions or aspect ratio of the image. So we turn that off and then simply copy, command C, command V to paste or control C, control V on a PC. I'm also going to take the, the resolution down for this demonstration so that the file doesn't get too enormous. It will show you the, the file size that you're going to end up with here. So we can go a little bit higher than that. 
and then we're going to press OK. So it'll take a, f a minute to, to process this. And then what you'll end up with is this rather strange looking image and it, it sort of feels like you've messed it up at this point, but this is exactly what we want at this point in the, in the process. Um, then what we're going to do is combine these two layers. So we've still got two separate layers down here, but we don't want that anymore. We want them to be just one. So we're going to go to the layer menu and flatten image, which basically combines the layers into one image file, like so. When you do that, it does lock again. So we need to take that little lock off. So we can do this next point, which is to flip again, but this time we're going to flip vertically. So we go transform flip vertical. That just means that it will have the sky on the outside. You'll see, you'll see what I mean. If you try this, go back and try this again. If you're following along without flipping, it will have a sort of opposite effect um, with the sky on the inside. We're going to say flip vertical. And then the last step is a very clever filter. We go to the filter menu and we're going to go distort polar coordinates. And um, it will be very zoomed in the preview of it. But if you zoom back out with this little key, you can see what it's going to do. And we press OK, give it a minute to process. And there we go. We've got our little planet of houses. So next up we're going to create that scrolling panorama effect. To create that I'm going to use iMovie for iPhone today just to show that you can do all of this on an iPhone but you can also use other kinds of video editors, anyone that uses uh, has a Ken Burns effect or has um, the ability to drop keyframes and change the position and uh, cropping of a photo. In iMovie though, what we're going to do is go to create a project and we get two options, but we want to create a movie project. We can then choose what to put in that movie and I'm going to use the panorama that we've already played with in Photoshop and press create movie. It then brings it in and immediately it adds this Ken Burns movement. Um, so the Ken Burns effect, if you haven't heard of it before, is something that you've almost certainly seen before. It's an effect with, originally used by a documentary filmmaker called Ken Burns, which shows the illusion of movement in a photo by slowly panning across and zooming and changing the size of the image. iMovie does that with a panorama by default and it will play it through um, left to right in a scrolling way. If we want to, we can change the speed of how fast it scrolls by dragging the little handle and making the image shorter. That will speed it up. So next what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this image. So we tap on it and press duplicate. And we want to change the way, at the moment, it's just going to sort of flick back or dissolve back. Actually, we're going to turn off that dissolve first. So there's a little double arrow in the middle there. And if we tap on that, that's our um, transition option, which is currently set on dissolve. We're going to change that to none. And then if we play that again, you'll see it just sort of flicks back to the beginning at the moment. But what we're going to do is tap on the photo and then we get the Ken Burns options that come up up the top. Um, and we're going to go to the um, start position and drag the photo over to the right and then we're going to go to the end position and drag the photo over to the left. Now when we play from the beginning what we get is this effect of the image scrolling side to side seamlessly. Once you've created that and you're happy, you can press done and you're able to press the share button down below and save your video. Mm -hmm.